We've built a lot of over-the-top PCs on this channel. Seven gamers, one CPU, the 16K gaming station, but all of those had something in common. Nobody in their right mind would ever actually buy them. So today the goal is a little bit different. We're building the absolute highest end gaming PC that we would actually recommend. So it needs to be blazing fast, but also stable. It needs to be, well, expensive, but also something that we could with a straight face say, there's a chance someone is actually gonna buy it. So we are talking a pre-binned 9900KS at 5.1 gigahertz from Silicon Lottery. We are talking dual RTX 2080 Ti's and air cooling. Because guys, it doesn't make a difference. And this video is brought to you by Glasswire. Instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device with Glasswire. Use offer code LINUS to get 25% off at the link below. To help me in my quest to build the fastest gaming PC money can buy, I've enlisted Jake. Oh, oh, oh. You got a little something on there. Just go ahead, yeah, just rub, rub that in. The challenge though, is that due to BC guidelines, we actually have to stay at least two meters apart from each other. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, you're gonna take that end of our very long table, oh and I'm gonna gosh. take this end. You're gonna focus on the case, okay. I'm gonna put the motherboard and all the components on there, and then at the end, we're just gonna, you know? Really? <laughs> wow. It wasn't even me. Ooh, hard drives, cables I need. Ah! Oh, those are yeah, but still. solid state. Let's kick off with our CPU choice. Now, obviously, AMD Ryzen 3rd Gen processors deliver a ton of value. But when it comes to absolute balls to the wall gaming performance, thanks to their slight single threaded performance edge, Intel still comes out ahead in the majority of games. Now, with that said, as games start to take advantage of more processing threads, that could change and something like a 3900X or a 3950X with four or eight more cores than this one respectively could beat it. Maybe we'll try out some Apex Legends when we're done building up the machine. But for now, the king of the roost really is still the 9900KS. And this one is a little bit special. So we got this pre-binned to 5.1 gigahertz at stock voltage pretty much, right? Uh, I think it's like 1.25 or A little bit boosted from Silicon Lottery. Now we would have bought the 5.2 gigahertz one for what is it, like $900? It was like 1100. 11. <laughs> but they were out of those, thankfully for my wallet because they did not just provide this to us, which is great. <laughs> Thanks for buying CPUs on the company dime, Jake, love it. Wow, they gave us a discount, all right? It's only got eight cores and 16 threads compared to a top-end Ryzen with up to 16 cores and 32 threads, especially for the price we paid. But in most games, that shouldn't make that much of a difference. We will fire up some Apex Legends though, just to see. Now, obviously case choice is a little subjective based on you know what style you're going for or how many fans you want or what radiators you got. But um, for us, we're basically just looking something with the most airflow possible because we're gonna have a lot of hardware in there. That's 220 ATIs, 500 watts, and that CPU overclocked is probably 250 maybe. So something like this, the PCO11 from Lian Li with nine fans. We're gonna completely load it up with Noctua's. Here we are. Should be plenty of airflow for our setup. For motherboard, we're using the Maximus 11 Hero from Asus. We could have probably gone with the code with its like cooler looking aesthetic and better rear IO, but there's no VRM difference. So given that this is all about performance and most of the motherboard is gonna be covered by, well, all the money we spent on performance with these graphics cards, there was no purpose to it. Now their top end board, the formula, has like water cooled DRMs and all that good stuff, but again, no real difference in performance and we're air cooling anyway, so. As always, the process is lift up the arm, align the little golden triangle with the little uh, dot on the motherboard or the little triangle on the cover, insert the CPU, put down the hold down, and lower the arm, this will pop off. Hold on to this in case you need to arm your motherboard in the future. If we were truly trying to be unlimited budget with no bounds, we could have gone with the 1600 watt, but we wanted obviously to be a little bit more sensible. So this is the 
thousand watt prime titanium unit from Seasonic. They make awesome power supplies, totally not sponsored. Um, we just love their stuff. Because we're not using sub-zero cooling and extreme overclocking or anything crazy like that, the only way we can squeeze more performance out of our system is by getting faster components in the first place. So we've gone with some 3600 megahertz CL14 sticks of Trident Z Neo from G-Skill. These are a combination of high speed and extremely low latency, and we've got 32 gigs of it, which I'm not expecting to be a bottleneck for gaming anytime for at least the next couple of years. As for why we went RGB, honestly, we wouldn't have spent more on it, but unlike the old days when you used to compromise some of your speed to have RGB lighting, nowadays the high-end stuff is just a lot of the time RGB, I don't make the rules, okay? One of the objectives we set for ourselves when planning this project is that it needed to be stuff that was off the shelf, something you could just pick up and buy or add to your shopping cart and build in a couple days. So we went with Cable Mod's Pro Cable Kits in their carbon color, which should match our ASUS board really well. That's gonna look awesome. One area we did go a little over the top was our SSD Z. We're gonna run two Samsung 970 Pros in RAID 0, but I don't even mind this because compared to their 970 Evo, it uses MLC flash, so we should get extra longevity out of it. And quite honestly, the choice to go with two in RAID 0 was more just about having two terabytes of capacity and less about trying to get more performance by RAID 0-ing SSDs. Honestly, it makes very little difference once you go to an SSD, as we demonstrated in this video right here. Oh, so, now there's a dent in this hard drive now. You've gotta be kidding me. Oh, just a little one. <laughs> When we're working on a showcase build, more often than not, we will use a water cooler, even if it's an AIO water cooler, just because the amount of, ooh, hey, ooh, there you go. Uh, the amount of extra space they leave around the socket and the aesthetics of the tubes and the LED fans and all that cool stuff looks really great. But the cold hard truth is they don't actually perform any better than a really high quality air cooler like this Noctua NHD15. And now that Noctua, has a black version of it. Oh, water coolers don't even look that much better. Jacku, where's the exhaust on this case? Uh, Top or back? Bottom. Bottom, you're going bottom exhaust? So you want uh, me to have the fan blowing down? I mean, I can. Uh, can you? Mm, no. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> the options are back and There's forward. a hole here, but there's not gonna be a fan. Okay. Just just do it, whatever. There's gonna be so much airflow in this case anyways, it's not gonna matter. These are hard drives. These are gonna hold all the stuff we need. That's why we chose them. <laughs> That's why we chose them. You're probably thinking, wow, 16 terabyte Iron Wolves. Those are overkill, and uh, you'd be right. Um, we just had two spaces in the back of this case, so we figured, let's just use those extra drives um, Seagate sent us and throw them in the back of the case to fill those slots. Man, it's kinda crazy to think that this is 32 terabytes of storage. Just in this little block right there. I know, right? My first computer that like I remember, our 386 or whatever it was, had a 100 megabyte hard drive. And then we upgraded, we got a 600 megabyte one. And I would always have to like move programs off the 100 one because my adult family would install everything there. And I'd be like, no, we have to put everything over here. <laughs> this looks stealth as F. All it needs now is GPUs. I'm wearing our GPU shirt, lttstore.com. I can't imagine a situation where I'd be like the product manager for X motherboard company and been like, you know what we need? Red SATA cables. This is what we're gonna manufacture in bulk. I just don't understand why things are the colors that they are by default. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't they just black in the first place? Yes. Why was red ever? Or these, uh, yeah, these are worse. Yeah, do, oh, okay, you wouldn't remember this. You were probably too young, but Gigabyte used to ship powder blue ones. Oh! Yeah, it was pretty awful. And that was on their high-end stuff back in the X58 days. Oh, the man. The best, though, DFI, UV yellow. Oh, wait, wait, is this the Gigabyte one you're talking about? These things? No, that's Intel. Those are sick. Those are UV blue. Those look awesome. With the UV light, those things are awesome. Big PP? Oh, they're big PPs. They're 3,000. That is so unnecessary. It's amazing. Here's your fans. Oh my god, why? Well, I can't hand them to you, can I? Well, yeah, I guess you're right. They're also like Noctua fans, so like I could probably throw this at a wall multiple times and it would be fine. You could probably throw it at a TV and the TV would break, not the fan. These are gonna be real close together. Is this the right Envy Link bridge? Yep. Ooh. Yeah, they're gonna be toit. Ugh. So what I'm gonna do to make my life a little bit easier is plug the eight pin connector in now. You can't tell, but this is my life being easier. That is such an annoying ringtone. 
Only because it's the one that I used to use, though. <laughs> that has woken oh. me up at like four in the morning oh. for a flight so many times in my life. Oh my god. It doesn't fit. What doesn't fit? Oh my god. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's so bad. Let's just switch to an AIO, I guess. <laughs> I look pretty good, you're not even paying attention. So we'll get the graphics cards plugged in, get an OS loaded up, and we'll try this thing. Got a little update for you. After we completed the build, we found that with the PCI Express slot spacing of that motherboard, there was no way for us to install our two triple slot cards in such a way that the top one wasn't going to absolutely suffocate. So we switched to the MSI Z390 Godlike. It's got a bunch of great features, including support for overclocked memory, 18 phases of power, fancy onboard audio, and most importantly, a much better slot layout so that we can get one extra slot between them for some extra airflow. With the new spacing, our cards are clocking up as expected and everything is set up for the showdown. As it turns out, our 5.1 gigahertz pre-bin CPU is $750, exactly the price of a Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core. So, Jake is over on the other side at the studio there because he doesn't have a sore throat and he has an identically configured AMD system that he's going to drag race against ours telling us once and for all if we actually picked the right gaming system because when it comes to other things, 16 cores, definitely a lot more than eight. So, so we're not gonna be looking at anything other than gaming here. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're running everything cranked at 4K with the only exceptions being that we're not running RTX DLSS and we have turned off motion blur. We're using TAA for anti-aliasing and we're ready to go. I'm at like 80 FPS in the opening sort of move around Lara. Oh, up around 90. Drum roll. Average FPS, 103. Average FPS, 97. Ah! I win by, ooh, 5%. All right, here we go, boys. Three, two, one. All right, I'm at 500 and change. Benchmark's done. My average is 381. What's yours? Uh, 300.8. That doesn't tell the whole story, though. So we're gonna check our frame view numbers in Notepad++ here. Render minimum, 13.5. Oof, I'm at 25.7. Double the frame rate in the smoke. 99% of my frames were over 99.5. Uh, 99% of mine were over 85.4. Okay, so that's actually a significant win. That's about a 20% uplift. Oh my God, this is bright. The HDR, oh my God. Like so many games, it doesn't have any support at this time for multi-GPU, so we'll be using just one of our RTX 2080 Ti's. Uh, we're running everything on Ultra Nightmare with HDR at 4K. Uh, what difficulty level you want, Jake? I'm too young to die. Ha 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 ha. Hey, got him. All right, here we go, boys. Let's uh, rip up some demon baddie. Oh wow, I'm oh, I'm gonna die. How are you gonna die? Oh oh man oh man. I'm looking at about 86.6 on my render average, and then render 99, one, two, three, four, 69.3. So that's a 10% advantage here, which surprises me because Vulkan tends to favor multi-threaded processors more. With that said, the 9900KS is still an eight core, 16 thread processor, and there's, there's sort of a limit. Finally, it's time for Apex Legends. We're running everything at insane slash maxed out. We're running TSAA. And uh, we have no FPS target, V-Sync disabled. Pick up a second weapon. Oh yeah, pick up another weapon. I grabbed the Spitfire, it's the second on the left. And then I'm gonna switch weapons. Wow, when you really max it out, this game's kinda heavy, hey? Eh? I averaged 96.8. 87 and a half. I thought I was gonna win this one. 10% up. I mean, I guess that's what a pre-overclocked processor does for you, but uh, all right. Well, it looks like we done did okay. We wasted a little bit of money on a second graphics card. Most of our games didn't really get much benefit from that. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. It seems like a pre-binned, pre-overclocked CPU from Intel is still able to edge out AMD's 3950X, which is their fastest gaming CPU. 
With that said, the situation might change when AMD launches their fourth gen Ryzen processors, which are rumored to be built on TSMC's five nanometer node. Really? I didn't hear that actually, that's insane. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Mission accomplished then. Without spending extra money on things we don't need, like 18 core processors, we built the unlimited budget gaming PC and it really does perform better than something priced the same, but that isn't 100% focused on gaming. With that said, I'm not recommending that anyone run out and buy this exact configuration, particularly the second graphics card is gonna benefit very few people and only in some games. But it was a lot of fun to say, okay, we're laser focused on nothing but maximum gaming performance and just build up something based on that. Speaking of having a lot of fun, it's fun to segue to our sponsor, FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the all-in-one accounting solution that's custom built for how you wanna work. It's designed to be simple and intuitive so you can spend less time on paperwork and more time on running your business. You can automate tasks like invoicing, organizing expenses, tracking time, and following up. And the best part is that everything's stored in the cloud so you can seamlessly switch between your PC and your mobile device. Pricing starts at just $15 a month with their $25 a month package handling up to 50 billable clients. Get 50% off your first three months of FreshBooks when you sign up for our paid plan at freshbooks.com forward slash tech tips. We're gonna have that linked below. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Hey, which one did we say we were gonna throw people to? Ah, if you wanna see something that's not entirely focused on gaming performance where we waste a lot of money, but still do get good gaming performance, check out the AMD Compensator. It's a freaking crazy machine. You guys might enjoy it. Like there's popular culture like characters named Linus. Like who? Like, like Linus. Like Linus Torvald. From Peanuts. <laughs> oh, I didn't watch Peanuts. Well, no, watch Peanuts. It's a comic strip. I didn't read Peanuts.